Of course, the most dominant arm in the American Civil War was the rifle musket or the smoothbore musket, the long arm of the common soldier. But we can't forget that there were the revolvers that were the cutting edge arms of their time, the repeating guns, the single action percussion fired guns that often were used by cavalrymen, were seen on the hips of officers as they led their regiments into battle. And here at the North-South Skirmish Association, one of the most interesting and unique matches that they shoot is the revolver skirmish. The range is clear, one minute to alarm. When I first started, musket, of course, was the core firearm that the association started with back in the 1950s, followed by carbine later on. Then when we got into the early 70s and so forth, revolver be shooting became popular and they decided to add the revolver team and match into it. So the three primary matches for the association for many, many years was musket, carbine, and revolver. And in fact, if to, even today, if you want to compete for the Grand Aggregate Award, you must shoot all three and get retain the highest score in order to win points to get that, that award. Our skirmishes follow a similar pattern, whether they're at a regional level or at the national level. They start with a period where you can shoot individual targets, paper targets, for score. Now here at the Nationals, when your team commander registers your team, you then also declare what individual matches you want. So for example, if I only feel like shooting the musket match, I will sign up for 50-yard musket, 100-yard musket, and the aggregate of the two. And there are medals for winners of each of those levels. And that holds true for, for all of our matches. So if you're a revolver fan, you shoot revolver. But you gotta declare ahead of time because you only get one try at it. And so you better be practiced up and ready to go because the competition here is fierce. The uniqueness about this is we shoot breakable targets. You know, not just punch holes in paper. And the excitement of shooting on a team with your comrades and your pards and against a common goal on a smoky Sunday morning out here. I mean, where can you come and start on a weekend, if you want to do it, start shooting a revolver and end up shooting a full-scale artillery piece, being on a team like that? I don't think there's any other place. National revolver teams are consistent of four individuals. You generally use a uh, six-shot revolver, although we have a wide range of revolvers that are approved, and some of the small 31 calibers are only five shot, but you rarely see those. Most people shoot a Remington, a Colt, or a Rogers and Spencer, you know, with six shots. The revolver match generally consists of pigeons on a backer, three pigeons per competitor, so there's gonna be 12 since there's four competitors. Then we shoot breakable targets at 25 yards, and these would be like four inch white tiles. They would be a three inch pot, and then we shoot a very large six by six tile as well. It's the shortest time overall that wins the match, and these are generally uh, 90 second matches, and we do this four times. Well, there's a lot of people here that know a lot about the Civil War, and there's always something to learn here. It's, it's really a wonderful place to come to get to see everything. And what's really interesting is when you're here for some of these competitions, it sounds just like a, just like a war, just like a real skirmish line. So in the revolver skirmish, you've got these guys on the line with really an array of different guns, but we've seen some really pretty predominant types on the line here. There's the 1858 Remington, and then of course, there's the iconic Colt 1860 Army. This is an original Remington revolver. If you notice the frame with the top strap, it makes for a very strong frame. You also sight this revolver using the, uh, the groove that's cut into the top strap, allowing you to focus on the front sight. Again, being a single action revolver, you have to pull the hammer back each time that you want to shoot it. To load it, you hold the revolver up, put your powder and your ball in here, ram it home with, with the loading lever, 
And again, these are very quick to, to uh, change the cylinder out. You open the loading lever, pull the cylinder pin out, pop out the cylinder, put the cylinder back in, you're ready to go again. This is a Colt revolver. The first thing you notice is that there's no top strap like you have on the Remington. Being a single action revolver, again, you must pull the hammer back each time to shoot it. The other thing is without that groove in the uh, top strap, you have to sight through using the notch and the hammer in order to be able to shoot this accurately. Unlike the Remington, it's a little harder to take the cylinder out of this. You have to actually knock this pin out, the entire front comes off, and then you slide the cylinder off of the in internal pin. To load it though, you do the same thing. Tilt the gun up, put your powder in the chamber, pull your loading lever down, ram the ball home. You do that six times, and then you're ready to go. If you're into revolvers, you're gonna shoot a four event match. Each one of the relays is only gonna be 90 seconds. If you're a reasonably good team, it's 30 to 40 seconds before you empty all six of those cylinders. And the matches we shoot are really unique because we're shooting firearms that are well over 150 years old. And some guys shoot some original guns. Certainly in the beginning of the NSSA, that's all they had. But then some of the replicas that have come to us are really, really good reproductions. If a manufacturer of a firearm makes a new replica, that has to be inspected by our small arms committee. And, uh, and then those guns from that manufacturer are now grandfathered in. If you own one, you can shoot it. There's a wide variety of revolvers, uh, manufacturers that are approved. Uh, one of the things that you know you have, we have to look for, and if you're a new competitor, is the old revolvers didn't have adjustable sights. So you need to pick a reproduction or an original revolver. Some people do shoot originals that have the original style sights on them. Uh, some people get them accurized, uh, but you can get a, an off-the-shelf Remington revolver from Uberti, Petersoli, or you know some other manufacturers loaded up with the proper size round ball, and you can be competitive right out of the gate. The people here are just so wonderful. The the whole spirit, the camaraderie, uh, the history that you learn, the knowledge base that's here is just phenomenal, um, and you know it, it's just hard to describe the whole feeling that you get when you participate with this and meet the people and it just keeps you coming back year after year after year. On our television series over the last few weeks, we focused in on several of the skirmish matches here at the North-South Skirmish Association, namely the revolver matches, the smoothbore matches, and the mortar matches. But what's important to understand is that these are just glimpses into what is a, an amazing larger experience here on the range and as you can hear in the background there are guns going off constantly as guys are taking sharps carbines to the range they're bringing their maynards they're bringing their smith carbines every kind of gun that fought in the american civil war you can see on the range out here and not only are there mortars like we've seen here on the range in past weeks We've also got artillery, full field pieces that are firing hundreds of yards downrange with live shot, trying to take out pictures of enemy gunners downrange. It's an amazing experience and you get to see every facet of the Civil War here all in one place.